Hi, welcome back to Golf Bets Gold. It's Martin Cowell here again. Here's a review of the Magical Kenya Open, which took place, uh, which ended yesterday, and the Arnold Palmer Invitational that also ended yesterday. I mean, a bit of a, in terms of a fast finish, really ridiculous, but I'll come on to that. Um, didn't do any good with the selections this week. We're in a bit of a trough at the moment. Um, but we've been in troughs every year of the service so far. Sometimes we've been in a trough of minus 50 points. But we've always come back in the past to average 100 points profit for a calendar year. And, and this year is no different. It, it's just a normal year. So the thing about golf betting is that you go in peaks and troughs. You know, it, it's not... I mean, it can, it can happen in horse racing, but, you know, where you've got meetings every day, it generally levels out. But in golf, you've got, what, two tournaments a week, sometimes one, and you have a down period of what can last six weeks. But then you come out with it with a couple of winners and you get back up there and then you progress. So um, it's unfortunate those for those members who have recently joined that they've joined in a trough. But um, if you look back at the results on the site of previous years, you can see that we've had troughs and peaks, which have um, come back to the profit figure at the year end. So, I mean, basically, that's how golf betting works, and there's nothing I can do about that. Um, I'm not excusing some of my selections, and I'll go into those as we go through the video, but it's just what happens. Um, okay, first of all, the Magical Kenya Open. Um, this was a really poor tournament, I thought. For even for European Tour off week standards, this was poor. Um, but Ashen Wu, uh, who's a Chinese player, he finished 66 65 over the weekend to um, take the title comfortably by four strokes. Um, <laughs> when I looked going into the final round, I, I Ewan Ferguson had that lead, but I, I don't. Ewan Ferguson is someone who I don't see being able to win. And I think this just got the better of him. I mean, he'd gone 66, 67, 66 on what was a difficult course. Fair enough. Had that four-stroke lead. And then cards are 76. Um, you know, and the leader, the winner, cards are 65. So that, that's just the bottle job. I don't care what anyone says. It's just your, his bottle went. Um, as predicted, it was a good lay at five to four, but we can't do lays on golf bets gold because we haven't got the volume in the lay markets to to go around all of our members, you know. So um, I can't really mention lay bets, but I, I thought he was an obvious lay. Um, but yeah, I mean Ashton Wu got it done comfortably. Um, I did waver in the in play selection over him and Marcus Kinhol, and I think. Ashen Wu was seven to one and Kinholt was nine to one, so I took the value because I couldn't make money bound. But obviously, I picked wrong because um, Marcus, Marcus Kinholt played as if he was defending a four-stroke lead and went around in a seventy-two when he needed to get it done. He ended up in a tie for eighth place, which was no good because we had three places because it was in play bet. But yeah, that was poor. Um, yeah, um, in terms of the rest of the field. Um, Aaron Cockrell tied uh, second. He's another one who I don't really like selecting because he doesn't win. Uh, but in third place, Friston Lawrence. Um, he won the tournament in 2021 where they had to abandon it, where they had to stop playing it after 54 holes and he landed in the lead. But he's a good young South African player. And I think next week, We've got a tournament in South Africa, and I think in South Africa, you always want to be on the side of South Africans uh, because they always play well at home. And, and I think we need to look for Friston Lawrence next week. Um, and Hurley Long, the German, who's who's a good player, who suddenly appears in the top 10 every now and again and then fades. You, he disappears for a number of weeks. But this was his week to kind of, you know, pop up there. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking down the field, not much to say really. I mean, Adrian Naus, who really should be doing better on the tour in these events, finished in the tie for eight, finished with a 66, but you know, he's well off the pace and he should be, based on his ability and what we've seen from him in the past, he needs, he needs to be winning tournaments like this. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't rate a tied eighth in this field because it was a very weak field. I know the winner picked up 
297,500 euros, which is a colossal amount of money. But it was a, well, this was a bonus week for someone, I tell you. Um, Jorge Campillo appeared going well, but finished with a 72. But he plays well February, March time for some reason. He's had his wins kind of, not all of them, but around that time mostly. Um, so, yeah. Um, for the rest of the field, I mean, you know, really, as I say, it was a non-event with average players. Dean Burmeister, who we may well watch last next week, um, and he was put up a short favourite. Was he 12 to 1, 14 to 1? Had a 76, which destroyed his card. I mean... Yeah, ten. If he went sixty-six in round three, he's in a playoff. But a seventy-six kills you. Um, the overrated Thomas Detry was also tied with Bowmester in tied twenty-six. He finished with a seventy-three with no pressure on. So I, I would just always give Thomas Detry a swerve these days. Um, Johannes Veerman, the American, has struggled to come back since the birth of his child um, in the past few weeks. He finished with a 68, but he was well off the pace, and he was in that big tie for 26, but he's hit five. Um, one of our selections was Noel Kearney at 150 to 1. I mean, he played okay, 70, 71, 69, 61, but, you know, he needed two low rounds, but um, we weren't a million miles off with him, you know, at that big price. Um, of the rest, well... Richard Ramsey, who was our top 20 selection, missed the cut. Um, and, and our other initial selection was Sean Crocker, but he retired after four holes in the first round. I mean, there's nothing we, there's nothing we can do about that. You know what I, mean? I mean, you know, he was either playing with an injury, which he shouldn't do, or he got injured early in, early in the first round. But, I mean, you know, we've done our money because he's hit... He's hit a shot, so you know he's he's crippled us there. But that happens. But um, yeah, I think we need to quickly move on from that tournament and get down to South Africa where we might have more chance. Um, the Arnold Palmer Internet Invitation. I, I thought this was a fiasco over the weekend with the conditions and the wind blowing, and I think ev basically everyone lost because everyone was all over the place. But someone had to win because the scores were just going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower, and lower. failure 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 um but scotty scheffler won uh for uh last two he won these last two tournaments out of three um i mean he only caught it at 72 in the final round i think he just kept it under control and just got fortunate that the others were failing miserably um tyrell hatton uh Victor Hovland and Billy Horshaw all, all tied second. All had chances. Um, Tyrrell had finished with a 69, but he'd had a 78 on Saturday. So kind of be taking his pressure on himself. Victor Hovland, um, 75 and 74 over the weekend. Would you really want to be on him? You know, I know Victor Hovland can win any tournament, but his short game is is rubbish. And he was missing the green here and he, it, wasn't, it wasn't good. Billy Horshaw... Yeah, a bit overrated, I think. But finish with a 75 to finish one shot off the lead. So he had a big chance to win a big tournament and fouled. Gary Woodland was a further shot back, but he even cut it a 73, you know. The only one really in the top 10 who carded, <coughs> apart from Hatton, was Lucas Herbert, the Australian, who's probably used to a bit of wind, if not the tough conditions. I mean... There's kind of tough and there's making the course kind of a little bit unplayable because if me or you have been out there, you know, we were doing well in well over a hundred strokes. You know, it was it was it was silly. Next week when we get to the players' championship, they won't want anything like that again. And and TPC Sawgrass is not the easiest course, and it's got a really hard finishing stretch, which which I'll talk about on Golf Bits Gold tomorrow. But that, that, they'll soften it up because they don't, they don't want anything like this. They'll want birdies on the Players' Championship because they call it, which it's not, the fifth major. And it's not the fifth major because there's only four majors. But this is their this is their showcase event on the USPJ Tour. So they're, they're going to make it, despite the course being tough, they're going to make it birdie friendly and they're going to soften it up with a bit of water on it. Um, 
but yeah um okay carrying on um we did an in play section of sam bones 40 to one each way he, he was going well he was he was six strokes off the lead but like i said i was expecting things to happen the saturday I saw him a 75 which put him out of it and he finished with a 71 to fly him up to t9 but that's no good to us with three places also in that tie for ninth was Matt Fitzpatrick. I, I, I just couldn't back Matt Fitzpatrick uh, on this USP jet. I, I just don't see him winning an event. Top 20, yeah, and I should have picked him in the top 20. And that was a mistake on my part. But yeah, I mean, he's not going to win against these sort of guys. And as for Rory, well, you know, we had him as a win bet and he went out with a 65 in the first round. Um, Friday, the conditions got harder, but he cut it at 72 to keep him kind of in there. But 76, 76 over the weekend. I mean, that, that's even in tough conditions, that's rubbish, really, for Rory because, you know, he patted poorly, he was missing the greens, and he was moaning afterwards about the course being too hard. But that's ridiculous. These, It was too hard, but he's the top players in the world. I mean, he's from Ireland, he's used to a bit of wind. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't, it, it was, I found it ridiculous, really, Rory, it, you know, like, because like I'd consider Rory, I'd consider Rory too short this week, and that's my error, which I, I apologise, but I would always think of Rory at 20 to 1, we've had a 20 to 1 winner with Rory eh, last year, but, you know, that this is just not good. John Rahm, he was... Tied 17th, 74 74 at the weekend, still not there. Not putting that great, but but it, he's playing okay, but he, he's well off winning. But he'll go a favourite next week in the in the uh, Players Championship. Hideki Metsuyama was tied 20th. Yeah, he didn't really do anything, you know, he just didn't score as bad as the others, really. So I don't think I'm going to say much about him. Um, and in that in that mass tie for 20th was also Sanjay Im. Uh, two good rounds, really, but, you know, two bad rounds. 68, 77, 70, 76. What did I say about Sanjay Im in the preview? Good player, good golf, but inconsistent. You want Sanjay where on, on going into the final round when he's four or five off the lead and he might get it going early and you might get a decent price about him and he'll win. And we've won like that before as well, but... I don't like backing him at less than thirty-three to one in a tournament at the start because you don't know, you know, you don't just know what you're going to get. Um, Adam Scott. I mean, people said he played well, but he didn't. He's been on a good run, but you know, he was sixty-eight, seventy-six, seventy-four, seventy-four. And that's not good. I mean, again, an Australian, and Australians are generally equipped to play in the win, but you know, I, I don't know how people can back Adam Scott. I really don't. I don't. I don't know. I've not come on to my worst pick yet, though. Um, and that was a goal for us that I'd never back until he won. And then I got sucked in this week because of his ball striking. And that was Will Zalatoris. <clears throat> Finished tied 38, open with a 68. So I thought, oh, perhaps he's turned over a new leaf. But then he goes 77, 70, 79. He was missing putts under a foot, and it was awful. And I say it now. I'm not going to back Rul Zalatoris until he wins a tournament on the US PGA Tour. Full stop. Just, I don't care what price he is. So that I'm, I'm done with him. Uh, Mark Leishman was also put up in places. He finished tight 68. He was average. He, he's another one who's overrated, I think, Mark Leishman. Missing the cut. Um, so I mentioned Jason Cockrack as well. Yeah, he wasn't good this week. Um, didn't miss the cut, but didn't get anywhere. That was rubbish. So not a good week. Poor stuff, really. Um, Rory, I mean, Zelatoris I shouldn't have picked. Cockwreck, I thought would go well, and he didn't. Rory, uh, I mean, the weekend was awful. Missing the cut. Among those missing the cut, Justin Rose on his favourite course. A top 20 pick. Missed the cut. What can you say? Should have been Matt Fitzpatrick. Mistake, my error, sorry. Patrick Reed again is still being playing poorly, missed the cut. And Seb Stracker, who won last week. So, you know, this is what I say don't back don't back the player who won last week because it's very, very, very difficult to go back to back. And he 
missed the cut as well. So that was it really, a 